Hello, my name is Elizabeth Malson, and I am with the U.S. Manny Institute. I am so excited to share with you the works, which is a comprehensive nanny and newborn care work agreement or nanny contract example. What's great about the works is a group of people came together and anything and everything they could think of, they put in this example. The works is appropriate for part-time nannies, full-time nannies, newborn care specialists, overnight nannies, travel nannies, and live-in nannies. If we could think of it, we put it into this example for you. Our goal in sharing this is we want you, whether you're a parent or a nanny, to have a great document to make sure you think of as many things as you can so that both parents and nannies are comfortable with the agreement. We know, being in the industry, that every job is different because every family and every nanny is different. The works can be downloaded as a PDF, as a Microsoft Word document, or a dot .pages document, and we've written it so that you can edit it. Our goal is to have everything in there you need so you can go through and check boxes, fill out blanks, and delete whatever you don't need. Our vision is for the works to become a kickoff point for conversations around job duties, compensation, time off, and really making sure everyone is comfortable with a nanny role. We hope you enjoy using the works and download it, but I also wanna share that you should speak to a lawyer when you confer, convert the works into a contract. A lawyer can help make sure that you've written it in such a way it meets with all local, state, and federal employment laws. So let's start this conversation and dive into this document, which has everything you need when hiring a nanny. So here's the document. As you can see, it's a nanny, newborn care, family assistant, work agreement contract example. So this example is to help parents nannies, nanny agency owners, local lawyers, discuss the unique aspects of working as a nanny in an employer's home. We are not lawyers, we recommend you talk to them, but this example is to help you have that conversation and talk about all the unique things that are specific to just the nanny industry. This example can be modified as needed for each family and entire sections may be deleted if they're not applicable to what you need. Local and state laws vary, so you're encouraged to consult an employment attorney to finalize. Let's dive into this example. The first thing you're going to see here is section one, which are the parties. It's going to have a date that you insert between the hiring family of the last name and the child care provider, which is the nanny's name. They're here and known as family and nanny. If you're doing a nanny share, there might be several family names that need to be inserted here. You can see there's a place here for the family members or parents' names, their addresses. If you have parents who are living in separate homes, but there's divorced parents, then the addresses may be different. If they're still living in the same house, that address may be the same. And again, if you have a nanny share where one nanny is working with multiple families, you would have different names and addresses here as well. Then the form has a place for the children, their names and their ages as well as a spot for the nanny's name, nanny's address, phone number. And here we also have the nanny's birthday and email address. What's important is who to contact in the event that the family cannot be reached. So this is the emergency backup space. You may have one or two people here that the nanny can contact if for any reason the family can't be reached. Now we're on to page two. Let's talk about job duties. The nanny is employed to provide a safe environment and care for the children. The nanny may be asked to perform additional duties that contribute to the safety and well-being of the children. If the job description has any of these duties, you can go ahead and check them. There's a wake-up routine, preparing meals, preparing snacks, meal cleanup, cleaning the dishes, any transportation, whether it's to or from daycare, school, or activities, nap time, play time, cleaning up messes, homework, bathing, bedtime routine, restocking the diaper bag, cleaning a playroom, children's laundry, clean the diaper bin, or make beds. This is a standard list of things nannies might do, which focuses solely on providing care for the kids 
in doing work that is directly related to those kids or the spaces that those children reside in the home. Nannies may be hired as a newborn care specialist, and they have slightly different or additional job duties. So this list allows you to check the things that will apply to a newborn care role in your home. Are they going to sterilize bottles, clean toys, clean a stroller? Are they going to do sleep training? Are they going to wash the baby's clothes? Are you going to do baby led weaning? Do you want required reading time and required music time? Are they going to do kangaroo care or baby wearing? Are you requiring tummy time? Do you permit the use of pacifiers? Do you want them to log all the food intake as well as log body fluids and sleep time? Do you want the baby swaddled? Do you want the nanny to know and track developmental milestones? Most daycares change the diaper every two hours. Do you want the nanny to do that or check it and change it as needed? Are they gonna restock the changing area in diaper bag? You'll see here and throughout the document, you can insert any additional tasks that are unique to your role. Nannies and newborn care specialists will follow the American Association of Pediatric Sleep Recommendations. This includes no blankets, bumpers, pillows, toys, or stuffed animals in the sleeping area. Babies will be placed on their back on a flat and firm sleeping surface. An infant should sleep in the parent's room close to the parent's bed, but on a separate surface or room sharing. If the nanny is working overnight, the nanny will be in the same room as the infant. According to the AAP, studies have reported a protective effect of pacifiers on the incidence of SIDS, even if the pacifier falls out of the infant's mouth. The pacifier should be used when placing the infant for sleep. It does not need to be reinserted once the infant falls asleep. Pacifiers that attach to clothing, stuffed toys, or other objects will not be used with sleeping infants. We put this in here just to make sure that nannies and parents know and are aligned to the AAP sleeping standards. Many parents have great expectations for what nannies can get done in a day, especially if they're working full time. And so nannies may have additional duties as a child educator or family assistant or housekeeper. The families can generally pick one or the other, but not both. There are just not enough hours in the day for a nanny to do three jobs. Overwhelming a nanny with family assistant or housekeeping duties can take away time from high quality childcare. So what would be some child educator duties? Well, nannies that have additional training might be able to do daily lesson plans, do a fitness or exercise plan, homework help, include baby sign language, do music enrichment, art enrichment, mandatory reading time, help with a second language, do trips to the park or the library, maybe do STEM activities. It really does focus on high quality childcare plus educational components. A second option is to do high quality childcare plus some help with family assistance or housekeeping. This could be cooking family meals, light housekeeping, dusting, mopping, vacuuming, cleaning the kitchens, the bathrooms, but it can also be running to the grocery store, doing general shopping, doing dry cleaning. What also may be included is pet care, and we're gonna have a separate section to define that. Section three, the work hours and work days. The nanny agrees to a full criminal, background check, drug screening and credit check prior or during any time of the employment. You can modify and edit this, edit this as you need. Nanny agrees to provide at least three professional references that can be contacted by the family to confirm previous employment, reason for ending employment, employment experiences, the age and number of children cared for, and other relevant, relevant employment information. The nanny agrees to start with the family on a specific date. You insert that here. And where the nanny will perform the work is important to communicate. Again, some parents are divorced and liberate live in separate locations. Other times there's a nanny share where one location or both locations are gonna be used. This comprehensive example also gives you the option to check all boxes for things that may not be standard in an, another work agreement. If nannies are needed for additional hours beyond a standard work week, there's gonna be some overtime pay. If nannies will need to be available for overnight care, if nannies are gonna travel with the family, if nannies are going to work 24 hours over multiple days, 
if nanny is needed when the parent or child is sick. And the nanny may not have a standard work week. Maybe it's going to flex and you guys need to figure out a process to make sure that both nanny and family understand availability and expectations with a rotating or a varied work schedule. You can check all of these here and it reminds you to make sure that those components are added or really clarified as we go through the rest of this work example. Let's move into section four on compensation. This is going to include the standard information to legally employ a nanny. So this says families abide by local, state, and federal law. And nannies are non-exempt hourly employees who are entitled to overtime compensation, and families will withhold the required taxes and do all the payments in the forms to have a domestic employee. I'm not going to read the whole thing to you. Uh, families will have workers' compensation insurance. That is super important in the event a nanny is injured while working. There's also the option here for nannies and families to agree to a paid orientation at the nanny's standard hourly rates. I threw in here four hours of paid time, but an orientation might be a couple of hours. It might actually be a couple of days of shattering the family to be successful. So I'm going to leave it to you guys to decide how long the orientation should be. The goal of the orientation is for the nanny to become oriented to the home and the family. This is discussing the roles and job expectations. It's also important that the nanny is prepared for potential emergencies and knows where and what to do in case of a fire, a tornado, an earthquake, a flood, or whatever the danger is in your area. The nanny and family should have an emergency evacuation plan and know where emergency supplies are. The family has an obligation to secure all weapons and nannies need to know if there are weapons in the house or make sure those weapons, including guns, are secured. Also, the family will inform the nanny if the children have any medical issues, allergies, diet, food restrictions. That is important for the nanny to be able to provide a safe environment. What you're going to see here that is already checked is the nanny is not a medical professional and in general will not administer medication. Now, some nannies are medical professionals, and so you can't uncheck it, but this is true for most nannies. They're not medical professionals. If medication is required, family will provide a medical authorization in administrative form. The family has to provide detailed instructions, and the nanny must confirm with the family prior to giving any and all doses of a medication. Let's go into some wages and benefits. The nanny will be paid X number of hourly rate. Um, there's an ultimate guide on how to hire a nanny that talks about the cost of hiring a nanny. And there's a lot of different tools out there to find that right hourly rate. It depends on a lot of things, including training, certifications, work experience, scope and expectations of the job. Clearly, if you're doing more of an educator nanny or a family assistant nanny, that's going to have a higher hourly rate than a nanny who's focused singularly on childcare. So please keep that in mind when you guys determine the right rate. The nanny will submit an exact timesheet. Um, here I put on the end of day Tuesday. Nanny will be paid each Friday. You guys can work out what's going to work for your situation. There's a checkbox here for overnight care. Uh, sometimes overnight care has a different rate, hourly rate, than the non-overnight care. That can happen as long as that rate is above federal, state, and local minimum wages. There's some guidelines here. Please look at fact sheet number 79D. That has all of the information according to the U.S. Department of Labor. Again, I'm not going to read this, but it's here for those of you who need to know more about overnight care. We also encourage families uh, if they don't want to get involved in the taxes, the paperwork, the documentation to use a payroll service. Uh, but however you want to pay your nanny, whether it is a payroll company, Zelle, Venmo, direct deposit, PayPal, check, other, you guys can agree to what is going to work best for you. Here's another section that you guys can read if the nanny is going to travel with the family. So travel rules for non-exempt hourly employees are a little bit complicated, put some of them in here. But again, as you need to, if you have complexity with this employment agreement, talk to a lawyer. While many parents may work in other industries and work with non-exempt hourly employees, there's something unique to the nanny industry and other industries that have guaranteed hours, right? The goal of this is to ensure the nanny receives a paycheck each week, if, even if the nanny's not needed that week. 
right? If this is their full-time job, they're going to need to know that they can have a steady paycheck to pay their bills. Guaranteed hours can be any number of hours. Maybe a family has a part-time nanny and is going to guarantee 20 hours. Maybe it's a full-time nanny to guarantee their full week. You guys can decide what works. Guaranteed hours only applies when the nanny is able and willing to work and the family chooses not to schedule the nanny. One of the most common examples is grandma has come to visit or grandpa has come to visit or siblings or aunts or uncles and they want to spend a couple of days on their own with the kids and the nanny's not needed. Another checkbox you can choose. The nanny will not be expected to work when inclement weather prevents safe travel as declared by local city or county. Days missed will not count towards holiday vacation and will be either paid or unpaid. I live here in Florida, so for me, this is hurricanes. Most of you guys have snow. Whatever this is, you guys can talk about what is going to work best for your situation. Another checkbox is that the family will pay nanny an additional $5 per half hour on top of standard wages if the family does not return home on time. We expect the nanny to arrive to work on time. We expect the family to come home on time. We also want the nanny to ensure they get paid on time. As they're working, they have bills to pay that are due that are not flexible. So here we have a checkbox that the family will pay the nanny a $10 late fee per day if the nanny's not paid on time. There are a lot of options you can offer a nanny as benefits. And so there's checkboxes here, or you can delete what does or doesn't work for you. You want to offer an amount towards medical insurance, an amount towards auto insurance, an amount towards cell phones. For people who might live in uh, New York City or other areas where there is public transportation or in San Francisco or LA where there's parking fees, parents may choose to uh, include meals uh, with the nanny's employment or the nanny may need to bring their own meals as they would for other types of jobs they might have. Whatever is right for the family and nanny is right for you guys. There's no right or wrong or requirements on how you want to come to an agreement. We also have in here something that is very close to my heart is training, childcare training and certification and professional development. Nannies who are trained can provide better care for your kids, whether that's sleep training, Montessori training, rye, special diets, knowing how to do exercises, knowing how to create learning environments, I think nannies are stronger when they have high quality training. So here's an example of a long-term full-time nanny position with a two and a half year training program that breaks it into small quarterly payments. I also have included in here that the family agrees to a performance review at six weeks so that any disconnects can be addressed early on and then again annually. Annual contracts renewals make sense because the children grow and the job really does change. Taking care of a three-year-old and a newborn is very, very different than taking care of a seven-year-old and a four-year-old. So we encourage annual reviews. Here's the option to provide a vacation policy for full-time and live-in nannies. You know, they can have paid holidays, which you can select here, or if they have to work those holidays, you can decide if you want it at standard pay or overtime pay. You can insert additional holidays. Uh, here we have an example of earning one week of paid vacation every six months. You can modify that to two weeks a year, however you want to do it. Whether we like it or not, someone's going to get sick. It's a parent, it's a nanny, it's a kiddo, we're going to get sick. So come up with your sick time policy. In some states, there are minimum requirements where you have to give a certain number of sick days. Uh, so definitely check and make sure you're doing the right thing here and being understanding that we all have days where we just are not strong enough to work. Let's talk about expenses. If a nanny is spending money to provide care for your kids and doing their job, they need to be reimbursed for that. So they can provide an itemized report and receipts for all expenses that can be reimbursed. The days and times of how you wanna do that are up to you. If the nanny is transporting your children, then they can get an itemized mileage report and you can use the IRS mileage reimbursement rate. Section five, and this is just called the collaboration. Uh, the nanny and family can request a review of this agreement at any time. Again, it's recommended to review annually. Should the jobs change, there's new children, parents get divorced, lots of reasons can change the scope of a role. So let's talk about the child care approach and how to communicate. You can do in-person conversations when you do handoff. Some um, parents want a childcare app that tracks everything. 
Some nannies use printed logs. You can do email, text. Whatever works for you is great. There's also parenting approaches that some nannies have studied and families want implemented in the home. If any of these apply, you can check the box, whether it's positive discipline, redirection, reward charts, one, two, three magics, time out, Loss of privileges, those are all behavioral modification tools, but there's also parenting strategies like Montessori, Reggio Emilia, Pickler Rye, Waldorf Steiner, that people may have a conservative approach to parenting, they may want a gender neutral, and LGBTQIA+, there's lots of things you can put here if you have a preference on parenting. And the goal of including this in the conversation is to make sure both the parents and the nanny are comfortable with how the children are be raised and how discipline in other situations should be handled so that the child has consistency among their caregivers. The nanny is forbidden from hitting, grabbing, shaking, or forcefully holding any child at any time. Children will always have full control of their own bodies. The nanny will not yell, swear, hit, shake, or spank a child at any time for any reason. All right, now let's talk about enforcing house rules. Are the children responsible for making their bed? cleaning their room? Are they going to have a bath every day, every couple of days? What time do they go to bed? What time do they wake up? Are there limits on the number of hours of screen time? If children are hitting and, and misbehaving, do they have to apologize? When do children need to ask permission? Do you want to make sure there's daily exercise? Is there daily homework, daily reading? And do you want family dinners? This is to spur the conversation to make sure the family and nanny are aligned so that children know what to expect each day, whether they're at home with a parent or a nanny. Here's the section on pet care. The family disclosed whether they do or do not have pets. It includes here the type of pet and name of each pet. If it's spiders, snakes, hamsters, it's good for the nanny to know what critters might be in the house, especially if that critter escapes, it shows up where it's not supposed to be. Uh, here you can choose whether the nanny does have responsibility for pets or does not, and you can modify this to make sure it fits the type of pet you have. Section six, these are the employment requirements. This is going to cover things like in the case of an emergency, the nanny will call 911 and contact the family. The nanny can contact poison control. This also has a statement in here about mandatory reporters. There are certain states where everyone's a mandatory reporter in the case of suspected child abuse. And there are other states that have other specific requirements uh, where they're required to report. So that's in here for you to have the conversation and make sure you are exploring the right thing to do. Section six also covers driving. If the nanny needs to have a valid driver's license, auto insurance, safely maintain and clean the vehicle, whether the nanny is going to need a car seat or if the nanny is going to be using public transportation, if the nanny is a car seat technician, or if the nanny is not, then how and when to correctly get the car seat installed. And also the behaviors for when nanny is driving. So of course, use all the safety equipment, drive in a safe manner, no use of cell phone, never leaving a child unattended in a hot car or any car, and never using drugs or having illegal items such as guns in the car. Next step is that nanny is expected to treat the family home as a professional work environment. So this is no illegal drugs. Prescription drugs will not be accessible to the children at any time. There, of course, is no smoking, no drinking alcohol. Uh, nanny will not bring expensive items to work. So nannies, if you have brand new, amazing, expensive tennis shoes or a brand new purse, do not bring that to work. Um, you also want to make sure that nanny does not use candles. That's a fire safety issue, and nanny needs to make sure that they're not negligent with the family's property. The nanny is also expected to behave as a role model. They'll arrive on time, wear proper attire, and be ready to fulfill their job duties. They will not use inappropriate language. And of course, nannies are mindful not to have music or other things that have adult lyrics or adult content on the television. The nanny will not invite friends to the home. The nanny will not make false promises, lie, steal, those types of professional traits. The nanny is expected to create and maintain a safe environment. This is especially true with water. Uh, children will not be in contact with any body of water without direct supervision. This, of course, includes pools, lakes, bathtubs, anything that could cause an accidental drowning. There's a section here to discuss vaccinations. Nannies may or may not be required. It is up to the family and nanny to determine what is gonna work for them. And you will see, of course, the annual flu shot and COVID-19 vaccination are options you can choose to check. 
The Navy understands the necessity of discretion and confidentiality for all manners pertaining to the family and children. This is a standard confidential confidentiality clause or non-disclosure agreement that prevents the nanny from sharing private personal information or employment information about the family, their children, or anyone related to their employment. This confidentiality non-disclosure agreement clause is in effect while the nanny is working for the family and after the nanny leaves employment. A common question we get are cameras. The family can legally have cameras and recording devices in their home. Cameras, however, cannot be placed in private areas such as a bathroom or for a live-in nanny, their bedroom. The nanny will not provide recording devices of any kind. Please check your local laws if you're recording audio. For some nannies, this makes them very uncomfortable, uh, but honestly, cameras are in most workplaces, in, in most places that we visit, whether it's a restaurant, uh, bank, grocery store, cameras are now a norm in our lives. Section seven, employment termination. The nanny is an at-will employee and employment may be terminated by either the family or the nanny at any time for any reason. That is pretty much true across the United States. Now the family and nanny can agree to give each other notice of intent to terminate. And you can put that in here if you want. It really does need to be written in some sort of form that is traceable and documented. So a quick phone call or a text message is not really what you want. You wanna email a letter or something like that. Uh, if the family does not want to do the two weeks, the family can, in lieu of those two weeks, of course, provide payment. Failure of the nanny to provide a notice might forfeit any of their own holidays or accrued vacation and any form of positive reference. Again, guys, modify this for what you are comfortable with. At the time of termination, prior to receipt of the final paycheck, nanny agrees to return all property. This can be house keys, garage door openers, car seats, strollers, there's all kinds of stuff, diaper bags uh, that might need to be returned to the family because it's their property. You can read through this and modify it. What I do wanna shout out though here is that family understands the importance of letters of recommendations and will provide a recommendation that is neutral or positive for the nanny unless the nanny has an unsatisfactory performance reviews. Hey guys, these references are crucial for nanny careers. And so if you can support your nanny with a written letter of recommendation. Termination for cause. So cause is when things go wrong, right? It includes, but it's not limited to the nanny endangering the child, inconsistency or non-performance of job duties, unprofessional behavior like theft, dishonesty, smoking, alcohol use, illegal drugs, uh, persistent tardiness, absenteeism, things have kind of gone wrong here. Um, so I let you read through this and you can choose what of this is important for you as a family or as a nanny to have included in your work agreement. Section eight, this may not be applicable to a lot of you, but this is called the works because we included everything. This is for our live-in nannies. Uh, so there's a fact sheet, number 79B, which published guidelines for live-in workers. So if you're new to hiring a live-in nanny, this is a great thing to go online and research. Um, what's important here is that you know how to be lawful, but also that the family will not ask the nanny to work off hours. Job creep or the scope changing is one of the biggest challenges you have to navigate when you're both a family and a nanny living in the same environment. Uh, so I gave an example here. If the nanny is not working, the children wants to show the nanny a quick picture of what they just drew, the nanny will be courteous and take a few minutes to look at the photo. This is what we do as part of being a family, but that nanny is not expected to stay long. They won't sit down, they won't join the child, they won't do coloring, they're free to go back and do whatever it was they were doing for their time off. In this section, you also want to include the living quarters. Uh, you can define that however it is. If it's a furnished private bedroom in a furnished private bathroom, or if it's a shared bathroom, if it's a furnished apartment, whatever it is, go ahead and put it in here. Nannies are generally responsible for the upkeep, as well as their own laundry, things like that. Room and board, the family pays for electricity, water, internet, trash, and common household supplies and cleaning tools. Like if you need a plunger or a hammer, uh, paper towels, things like that. Here I've put the nanny quarters will be off limits to the family unless required for household maintenance. You guys can make arrangements that work best for both of you on what that's gonna look like. I've also included a checkbox here that the children shall not be in the nanny quarters at any time. 
If it's truly their private space, this is a nice boundary for the nanny to have. They just have to be comfortable knowing that they can't break this rule either. If the children are not allowed in there, they are never allowed in there. It can't be an on or off thing. That would be too confusing to the kids. Nanny will keep all their personal property within the nanny quarters. They may have a garage space for a personal vehicle. They may have garage storage for large equipment, such as a bicycle. You also need to talk about the kitchen and the food. Um, they might have a shelf in the refrigerator. They might have a shelf in the cupboard. Uh, nannies can or cannot use the family's cooking supplies and food. If you want the nanny to have their own sugar, can they use the family's sugar? How do you want to make sure that the nanny is set up to do the right thing in the situation? Go ahead and have the conversation, figure it out, and then you guys know how to work well together. Um, this one I put in based on personal experience. Uh, I had that snack foods and all foods could only be eaten in the kitchen uh, because we had a, a situation where the nanny room actually got a whole bunch of bugs in it because there was a whole bunch of food and trash in there. Um, that didn't work. And so uh, this is a personal thing that, that, that I advocated for. If it doesn't apply, go ahead and take it out. Uh, if house cleaning services are hired and the nanny's quarters are private, then that will not be included in the housekeeping services. Um, nanny, of course, in, in when I've had live-ins, nanny can use common areas, living room, kitchen, dining room. And if there's any community amenities like pools, tennis courts, bicycle, paths, basketball courts, anything like that. Here you gotta talk about live-in nanny's friends and their family and maybe significant others. Um, when are they allowed to have guests over? What's the policy for guests? What about overnight guests? What if guests smoke? Um, how do you wanna manage all of that? Uh, here's an example make it your own. Uh, pets, if there's going to be, if the nanny has any pets, I would definitely write something in about that. Um, and then I will let you know that nanny's personal belongings are generally not covered by the family's insurance in the event of loss or damage. It's highly encouraged that nannies get their own renter's insurance in case of fire, theft, flood, or other property issues. Nannies also need to be told any residential community rules such as you're not allowed to park on the street or you're not allowed to have glass containers at the pool. And they, of course, need to be accountable to those rules. Like with everything in this document, if you think of something that you want to add, go ahead, add it in, make the contract work for you and your family and your name. And we're at the end. This is just the agreement page, right? It's the name of the family, the name of the nanny. You agree that to the best of your ability, what you're representing in the document is true. You guys have had a long, intense conversation that hopefully was fun. You guys have come to an agreement. We want everyone with this document to be comfortable. You've seen a lawyer if you need one. And here is your signature. In this case, I've done e-signatures are accepted. Um, you can go ahead and seal the deal. I hope the works in this 14 page document in its current version, which might change as we get new insights and feedback, thing could be modified. So it may get shorter, longer, who knows? But I hope that this experience has been extremely helpful to you as a parent or a nanny.